we just received the new Wave 2 portable air conditioner from EcoFlow. So in today's video, we're gonna review the unit and then answer the question, is this a legitimate way to cool and heat your van? So let's first take a look at the Wave 2 air conditioner and everything that comes with it in the box. The air conditioner is basically broken into two parts. You have the actual unit itself, and then under here we have a add-on battery. The reason you would get the battery, because it's an optional upgrade to the air conditioner, is if you're planning to run the air conditioner without a power source, the battery is required for that. And then also if you're looking to charge the unit with solar power or while you're driving your car, you need the battery in place to basically take in the power and store it so that the air conditioner can use it as needed. Also inside the box, you have all of your user manuals and your warranty card. We have a power cable. So this plugs into your 110 volt outlet at home. And just as a side note, if you do plan to charge the air conditioner and the battery with solar power or with the char car charging, neither of those cables are included in the kit. So you do have to get those separately. Also included in the box is a drain hose. So in the heating mode and also in the air conditioning mode, if there's high humidity, then the unit is going to collect the condensed water. And you can use this hose to drain it either into a reservoir or outside of the vehicle or whatever the case may be. We have three of these vent hose adapters. So there's one each for your conditioned air your exhaust air, and then for the fresh air intake. So depending on the setup you're using, you're gonna need to use the vent hoses to get the hot air out or the cold air out, depending on which function you're using. Um, and we'll go over that in a second. But also within the kit, we have the two vent hoses that match up with these pieces so that you can vent the unit. These are very high quality. They will last a long time, you can tell. Just as a note, all of this equipment, in my opinion, is very high quality. That was one of the things that I had a question about when EcoFlow first put out the air conditioner and the glacier cooler, and really all of their equipment, is how would the quality be? And I'm finding it to be definitely up to par for the price that they charge for it. All right, now let's take a look at some of the technical specifications to see what the unit has to offer. First of all, this is a true air conditioner. It is not a swamp cooler. It is not a partial air conditioner. This actually uses a compressor and conditions air the same way that your air conditioner would at home or in your car. So that's great because the air coming out of it is really cold. I've seen it down to 50 degrees or lower. So the unit is relatively lightweight. I would say it's definitely portable. With the air conditioner and the battery together, you're still under 50 pounds. It's pretty easy to pick up and move around. It's not something you can put in a backpack and take out to your camping trip, but mostly used for car camping, of course, or short distances, you're gonna be able to, to um, tote it around pretty much with no problem. All right, let's start by looking at how you power this unit up. So the main way to power the unit to be as simple as possible is to use the 110 volt wall outlet. In this case, you don't need the battery at all. You can simply plug it into the wall and the unit will run all of its functions right off of the wall outlet. If you are gonna be using it away from 110 volt power, that's where the battery comes in. If the battery is fully charged, you can simply attach it to the cooling unit turn it on and you'll have anywhere from four to eight hours of air conditioning and two to four hours of heating just off of the battery. Now, in order to recharge the battery, there's a number of different ways you can do that. So solar charging, you can plug in one of the EcoFlow solar panels up to 400 watts and charge the unit. And just as a side note, it consumes about 400 watts. So theoretically, if you had a 400 watt panel out in the sun and you are running the air conditioner, it pretty much balances out where you're not actually consuming any of the battery power. Another way to charge it would be through your car outlet, like a cigarette outlet, 12 volts in your car. It only allows for up to 100 watts of charging through the car outlet. So that's only gonna be a fourth as much power going in as you can get with solar. So that will be a relatively slow way to charge it. But if you're driving down the road, let's say you've used it for a few hours and then you're gonna be traveling for the next half a day, 
you can probably get enough power recharged into the battery that you can continue using it day after day that way. The final way to power it, in which you don't need the battery at all, is if you have one of the EcoFlow Delta portable power stations. EcoFlow allows you, with one of their extra battery cables, to plug directly into the EcoFlow Wave, thereby using the, um, the power station as the main power source for the Wave 2. So let's take a look at what you can expect in terms of how long this unit will actually run off of the battery. The battery is 1150 watt hours and the consumption of the device is going to be typically between 200 and 500 watts. So if you're in cooling mode, in eco mode, and it's only pulling about 200 watts, then you're going to be able to get up to six or seven hours of runtime off of just the battery without any additional charging. When you're in the heating mode, the unit actually does use more power. Um, so that's gonna be more in the neighborhood of four to 500 watts. So if you do the math, the 1150 watt hours is gonna get you two to three hours of runtime. Um, definitely not as much as running the AC. Um, but still a good amount of time without having to recharge. Now let's talk about how the unit actually works. This is somewhere where I think the marketing that EcoFlow has put out around the Wave 2 has been a little bit misleading. If you look at some of their marketing materials, they'll show this unit just sitting out on a table or sitting out next to somebody at camp or in their tent. And that's not really how you have to set it up to get it to work properly. So being an actual air conditioner or heat pump, you're going to have cold air coming out of one side of the unit and pretty much an equal amount of hot air coming out the other side of the unit. So the hoses are definitely necessary in order to get this to function properly. If you just have it set, set out in open space and turned on, it will feel cool coming out of one side, but it will feel hot coming out of the other. So unless you separate the air, you're not gonna actually be cooling your space. Practically, if you're actually gonna be using this, you're gonna need to vent out, first of all, the hot air. Let's say we're using it as an air conditioner. The cool air is gonna come out of this side or all the conditioned air comes out of that side. And so the hot air is gonna come right out of the top exhaust here. So it's critical that you put on this adapter, snap that on, and then you're gonna to need to run one of your vent hoses and these just click right in and then you pull the vent hose out and run it out to the exterior location. Another option, like if you're using, a, using this in a tent or something like that where the unit can be set outside, then the exhausted air is always already gonna be where it needs to be, which is outside. So in that case, you're gonna put the conditioned air on a vent and then have that blow into the location where you want it to be. Again, put your vent tube in place and run it into your location. So now this is outside, the, the unit's gonna be cooling the air that comes in through this vent and it's gonna be exhausting the air out of here and it's always gonna be bringing in fresh air. So that would be the setup for when the unit is outside of the space that you want to condition. And this works in both directions. So whether you want to have it as an air conditioner or a heater, you really think about it the same way. This vent here is always the conditioned air. So in cooling mode, it's the cool air. In heating mode, it's the heated air. And then this is always the exhaust. So in cooling mode, the hot air comes out of the exhaust. And in heating mode, since it is an actual heat pump, then the cold air is going to be coming out of this side. And the final adapter here is for fresh air. The larger vent hose, which goes off of here, again, just click it in. And then this would be bringing fresh air into the unit. You would have both of these hoses hooked up. You have the fresh air intake from the outside and then the exhaust going out to the outside. Now, in order to actually use the unit, let's take a look at how you turn it on and how you set the functions. And there's two ways to control the Wave 2. The first is with the display that's actually on the unit, has a nice display and push buttons to change the temperature and change the modes. You can also use the EcoFlow app, and that's actually easier to control the unit, and I feel like I have more control over the functionality when I'm using the app. 
So let's go ahead first and turn it on. It comes on. And then from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the app because this is generally easier way to control it. All right, so here on the app, the first thing you will wanna do is set your function. So is it going to be an air conditioner, a heater, or just a fan? So right at the bottom of the app, we have the three different functions. I'm gonna put it on cool for right now. And then we go ahead and set our temperature. So let's say we want it to be 70 degrees. It also gives us the ambient temperature, which looks to be about 71.1 degrees right now. And so it is, should go into cooling mode. And then next, after you set your function, you'll set your mode. So you click on the M. And manual mode means that you're gonna be setting the temperature and the fan speed and all of that manually. If you switch it to max, it's gonna be, be putting out as much cooling power as possible but it's also gonna be using the most amount of power. We'll go into sleep mode, which is kind of the medium power usage, uh, but it really tries to keep it as quiet as possible. And just as it's running right now in sleep mode, this would be no issue whatsoever being next to this while you're sleeping. And then finally there's eco mode and that is the most efficient. And the way that it works is it's basically like sleep mode, but it is going to turn the compressor on and off so that it saves some power. And then when the compressor is off, it's gonna continue running the fan to process the air, but it's not going to be drawing nearly as much power. Okay, so something interesting will be to look at if we click on the battery icon here, it gives us our battery state, which is at 53%. And also it's telling us right now what the output is. So we have 100 of, 160 watts in the cooling mode right now. If I go to max, I'm gonna give it a second here. Okay, so just after a couple seconds here, we're already up to about 250 watts. So that's a really nice thing about the app is you can actually go in and see how much power you're consuming. And it also gives you an idea of how many minutes and hours you have left running the unit at the current power demand. So again, at the max, about 250 watts. And this is definitely gonna depend on your ambient air temperature. The hotter it is, then the harder it has to work. So finally, we will go to eco mode and go back to the battery. But generally you will see in eco mode that the unit is gonna be drawing a lot less power down to 100 watts or less. And again, it is um, going to be turning on and off. So even the max power draw that you'll see in eco mode will only be part time. When it is only running the fan, it draws very little power, 10 to 20 watts, okay? A couple other things on the app that are very useful. There's an icon that shows you how much water there is in the unit. So particularly when you're in heating mode, since it is a heat pump, it is going to collect condensation in the unit. It has a storage capacity in here and it will give you an indication when it's getting too high and then you need to hook up the drain hose and drain the water out. One of the interesting features of the Wave 2 is that in the cooling mode, it actually uses evaporation from the exhaust to take the humidity that it's collected from cooling and vent it outside. So this is a really unique feature. Um, it's actually a little bit counterintuitive. We think that air conditioners produce a lot more condensation than heaters do, um, and that can be true in certain situations, but the way that this has been designed, they actually take the condensation and drip it over this exhaust vent and then the air blowing through it to outside actually has the humidity captured in there. So a really unique way to minimize the amount of condensation that's collected and have a way to get it out without having to put a permanent drain in. Just a few more features on the app, and this thing is really packed with features. There is a timer, so if you want to have it run for four hours and then shut off as you're sleeping to um, you know, preserve the battery power, then you can do that. 
In the settings, you're also able to just do basic things like set how long the screen um, is illuminated before it times out, set your temperature units, and then also the drain mode. This is a pretty important function that you need to know that it's there. Um, if you are going to be draining it, you can turn the drain mode function on or off. And then you also can tell it basically when you have a hose attached and it uses a little pump and it will pump the condensation out of the unit. So it's gotten down to temperature and now the unit is basically shutting down. So it's an intelligent air conditioner, meaning like it understands the ambient air temperature. It has different modes and settings that you can use to preserve power. And it's gonna turn itself on and off as needed to keep the temperature that you've set while drawing as little power as possible. So one of the things that EcoFlow has done really well is create an app that's very user-friendly, that's not just for the Wave. If you've bought the EcoFlow Glacier or an EcoFlow Power Kit or a Delta Power Station, then you know that this one app can control all of those devices. And to me, that's really cool. If you happen to have a van and you get the Power Kit and you get the Glacier and you get the Wave, and you're really kind of running in the full EcoFlow ecosystem, then basically from the palm of your hand, you can control all of your devices and see what's going on with all the systems in one place. Now let's take a look at who is a good candidate for an air conditioner like the Wave 2. Number one, folks who have a very simple build, this makes a ton of sense for. So if you're not gonna have a complicated build with a large power system and you really just wanna keep things simple, this is probably the simplest way to go for air conditioning. Also, if you already have your van built out and you don't wanna go back in and do new cuts in the roof and run new wires for, to your power system, then the EcoFlow Wave 2 is gonna be a great solution for that as well. This is very DIY friendly and also budget conscious. So in the, in the scope of how much air conditioning costs to put into a van, this is definitely gonna be way at the lower end. So it's not uncommon for folks to spend $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 or more on a typical air conditioner that you would install in a van. So if you're doing like a nomadic or a dometic on the roof, those are gonna be in the neighborhood of $3,500 to $5,000. And then if you're gonna do a cruise in comfort, which is a better cooling system overall, that is also gonna be at least four to $5,000. And that's just for the parts. We haven't even started talking about the cost of installation. So if you're a DR DIYer and or you are budget conscious, this is gonna be a great option. Also, if you don't need air conditioning for that many months of the year, let's say it's only hot where you live for two to three months and the rest of the year you really don't need air conditioning, then the Wave 2 is gonna be a great way to bring air conditioning along when you need it and leave it at home when you don't. And then finally, if you need air conditioning fast, if you're leaving on a trip in one to two weeks, you know it's gonna be hot where you're going and you don't have any way to cool the van, then you can get this delivered and installed much quicker than you could possibly do any other air conditioning solution. Now let's talk about who would not be a good candidate for the Wave 2. If you need maximum cooling capacity, for instance, you have a large van and you, you're gonna be in places that are very hot, then being only a 5100 BTU air conditioner, this is not gonna cool the entire space in the same way that an air conditioner with a higher capacity would do. So some of the others can offer up to 10, 12, or even 14,000 BTUs for a van. So if you need a lot of cooling power, then you probably wanna go with a more powerful unit. Secondly, if you need air conditioning year round and having air conditioner on board at all times is important for where you live, then it probably makes more sense to just design in a static air conditioner that's permanently mounted to the vehicle and have that with you at all times, rather than taking an air conditioner in and out. And then finally, if you have limited space inside your van and you just really don't wanna have another component to deal with inside, then the Wave 2 does take up some space on the inside. Honestly, it's not a lot, but by the time you have the air conditioner set up and the vent hoses run, it's not as elegant of a solution as having a rooftop air conditioner or a modular air conditioner like we talked about. So if you're someone who needs air conditioner 
for eight to nine or more months out of the year, then I would say just go with one that's mounted permanently in the vehicle. I personally fall into the group of people who the Wave 2 makes a lot of sense for. So when I designed my van, it was a very tough decision, but I decided not to put an air conditioner on my van for two reasons. The first is that I really value the space on my roof rack. I'm up on my roof rack a lot and I didn't want a large air conditioner taking up about a third of the space on the roof rack. I just use it for too many other things. And then secondly, and, and why I can get away with that is because living in coastal California, there aren't really that many days when I need air conditioning. So I figured that the trade-off would be to suffer few, through a few hot days and just leave the air conditioner off. But now that the EcoFlow Wave 2 is available, I'm really excited because there are certainly days where I do wish I had air conditioning, but I don't want it with me permanently. So I'm gonna be installing this on my van. Why don't you guys come and join me and we can see what it actually takes to put it in my 144 Sprinter and see how it works. All right, so let's see what it takes to put the EcoFlow Wave 2 in my van. All right, so the first thing that I'll mention, I went ahead and put up my front window cover and my driver's side window cover, and there's no reason to try to air condition your van if you have sun shining in and heating it back up. So first, do your window covers. The next thing you'll need to do is put up this vent adapter. This is made by TerraWagon, and thank you so much to the guys at TerraWagon because this is one of the key things that you would have had to make yourself if they didn't make it. This goes in the passenger side window of a Sprinter. And I did talk to Eric at Adventure Wagon. So if you have a Transit or a Promaster, they are gonna be coming out with these as well. As always, you can just check our website to see what's available. But the strategy here is to roll down the window and you wanna roll it down all the way. Then you go ahead and fit this in, give it a little twist and it goes right up fits perfectly in the window. That's one of the things that TerraWagon is always really good at. They are obsessive about getting good fits and making this look professional and not just pieced together. All right, so once that is in place, we're gonna go ahead and roll it up. And what we're doing here is just making sure that the window goes right into, there it goes, into the vent adapter. And there you go. Not too difficult. If it happens to catch up on it, the window's just gonna go back down. So there's no real chance of uh, breaking this or anything. All right. Oh, one other tip I wanna show you guys. If you haven't figured this out already and you have electronic seat adjustments, here's what you wanna do. So this has three settings, one, two, and three. Setting number one should be your driving position. So if you have a passenger in the seat, a comfortable driving position, so you just click number one. In order to rotate the swivel seat, which, which we're gonna do to put the EcoFlow in, you have to bring the seat back forward and move the seat up. So I put number two as the setting that the seat will need to go to so that I can swivel it. And then once it's swiveled around, we're gonna go and push button number three and the seat's gonna move into the configuration where it levels out. I'm not gonna set the EcoFlow Wave right here on my seat. So essentially I have it pulled back as far as possible and you are able to adjust the seat so you get it as level as possible. And you do need to have that so that the condensation isn't running out on the seat. All right, so let's go inside and actually install the unit. I'm gonna set the Wave to on the rotated passenger seat and something we carry with us is one of these kneeling pads. Um, that's good for just kneeling around the van if you need to do anything. Or if you have short legs and you're a passenger, you can put this under your feet and so your, your legs aren't dangling, which is a common thing on sprinters. I'm gonna set this on my seat just to bring it up a little bit and give it a little bit of protection. It is possible that you're gonna get some drips off of this, especially when you're moving it. So I'm just gonna have that there as a little bit of protection. And as a side note, as of right now, the vent hoses on the EcoFlow are not long enough to reach all the way from the floor of the Sprinter up to the window. So you would need to elevate it um, about six to 12 inches at least off of the floor for the vent hoses to work. That's why I'm setting it on the seat. And I think that's actually a better location anyways because you want the air conditioning to be as high as possible. All right, 
Now I'm gonna hook up the vent hoses. All right, so we're up and running with the air conditioner. It really only takes about five minutes to set up in total, so it's really convenient in that way. But there it is, that's what it looks like. It's definitely not the most elegant solution for air conditioning in a van. So again, if you're the type of person who's gonna use air conditioning every day for months on end in your van, you probably wanna get one permanently mounted, but um, this is a great solution, and the trade-off is the convenience versus the elegance. Okay. So the last thing I wanna show you guys is how this will work with a solar panel. So if you wanna be running the air conditioner and recharging it at the same time, let's hook up solar panel and see what that, see how that works. We've got a 220 watt solar panel here from EcoFlow. I'm gonna set it up and we're gonna see how this works. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put it on the window because that's where the sun is hitting right now and that's gonna give us like double insulation and protection from the sun. charging the battery. Now that the panel is plugged in and in the sun, the total consumption for the device went down to just around 200 watts, meaning that that one solar panel is making up for about half of the power consumption that the Wave 2 needs right at this moment. So theoretically, if you put out another panel, you would actually be getting full charging from the sun and running this unit directly off of solar panels. Of course, the battery has to be in between, but it's a really cool concept to think that from the sun, you can create cold air, of course, with these devices in between. All right, so let's answer the question, is the EcoFlow Wave 2 a legitimate way to air condition your van? And I would say the answer is absolutely yes. For the right type of person, this is a great new addition and a new way to cool your van that has a couple unique features that you're not gonna get with any other air conditioner. Number one, it's portable. So you can use this inside your house. You can use it in a van. You can offer it to a friend, or if your power goes out, this is a quick way to get some cooling. And the other unique feature is that it's fast and easy to install. So I didn't have air conditioning in my van 10 minutes ago, and I do now. So that pretty much speaks for itself. This is a new great way to get air conditioning without all of the hassle and cost associated with the traditional ways that we do it in vans. Okay, so if you guys are interested in this, we have a special offer just for our YouTube community. We're gonna be giving you guys the TerraWagon vent adapter for free. So if you have a Sprinter van and you want a Wave 2, check the code in the description. You're just gonna punch it into the website and we will send you the vent adapter for free. All right, everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm really stoked about the new Wave 2. I'm gonna be taking it with me all summer long and testing it out. And thank you guys again for watching and we'll see you again next time.